Welcome to this session, um, all about healthcare and well-being. Uh, just a show of hands, just at the start, how many people are working with healthcare in some way or the health industries? Quite a few of you. Um, how many people are makers in the room? Yeah, okay, that's helpful. Um, when I was approached by the Crafts Council, Council to speak at this event, it got me thinking about um, craft innovation and what that means. And I came to realize that the Helen Hamlin Center for Design, which I co-founded uh, in the late 90s, um, and we have a quite large healthcare um, research lab, um, I realized that actually the core principles around craft innovation to do with exploration of materials and making were absolutely critical to everything that we do. And in a way, it made me rethink um, some of the projects that we've been involved in. Um, and uh, you can see here two of our uh, research associates, um, uh, Katie and Andy, and they were working on a large autism project, working with adults with autism, and they created a whole series of sensory props. Um, and right the way through our work, there are lots and lots of different uh, uh, aspects of where material and making, and this conference has really um, set out the landscape of change and re indeed revolution. Um, there are more and more opportunities in the healthcare field. And if you think about it, um, healthcare, whether mental or physical well-being, is all to do with the person, to do with the individual, to do with how we are physically and psychologically. And each interaction with our material world affects our health, but each interaction in health processes is very much an opportunity for a craft vision because it's a one-off. You know, a lot of health processes with the individual are one-off processes, and therefore it brings the craft maker into this arena. And as you can see here, they're using very traditional craft skills to make sensory props to work with, with adults with autism. And sometimes, the, the process of exploration and use of materials and relationship with the body. This is work um, to develop a new um, a device to stop people swallowing their tongues in trauma. And um, uh, it was originally called Tongue Sucker, but don't put that into Google, please. Um, uh, and uh, um, so in a way, it ended with a manufactured product, a cheap manufactured product, but, but the processes to get there were all straight out of the craft textbook. Sometimes we end up with, a ma you know, this is a disposable injection molded uh, surgical tool. Um, but to get there, we talk to surgeons who consider themselves to be craftspeople. And if you think about it, surgeons are craftspeople. They're working with material, human material. Um, and they are, they, they rely on sense and touch and feel and and tactility, and it's, it's, when, you, when you begin, it's like flicking a switch. Um, when you think about a lot of medical processes, they have a lot of analogy with the crafts. Oh, pointed at the computer. Um, sometimes crafted objects find their way into health settings. This is, um, this is work uh, in care homes, in Bupa care homes, where family members were very distressed to see their elderly relatives drinking out of colored plastic beakers, and so we cast some ceramic ones. Sometimes the, uh, the objects aren't functional, they're symbolic. Uh, this is work by Joe Taylor, one of our research associates, um, exploring the ideas around aging, and this is an object to stroke and hug. Sometimes it's not even to do with the body, it's environmental. Um, we were invited by the London NHS to help them come up with solutions of the problems in London hospitals of mixed wards. And again, you can see a craft process in making a concertinaed pleated textile um, instant wall 
to actually separate male and female um, zones on a, on a large London hospital ward. And here's the thinking behind it with a double layer of fabric intention and aluminium studs. So I thought I should just quickly, before I introduce the other speakers, show you one case study uh, from the Helen Hamlet Centre Design. So we've been working for a number of years on redesigning the London Ambulance. The London Ambulance, um, if you've had the misfortune to, to be in one, looks a bit like this. Um, it's quite intimidating. Um, you don't have 360 degree access to the patient. And it looks a bit like a, a 1950s kitchen. And it, everything but the kitchen sink is in there because it's not a smart vehicle. Uh, and they have to put everything in there for every eventuality. And we did a whole program um, uh, working with the London NHS and various partners at Imperial College. And we re redesigned the standard emergency ambulance. And you can see the craft processes within that. First of all, we built an ambulance tank out of cardboard. And actually, when you take everything out, it's quite large. These are two of our research associates. Um, we brought on board in a co-design process a, uh, uh, a paramedic. This is Dixie Dean, who joined us for six months to help develop. Uh, you know, This is a kind of frontline NHS worker uh, who goes out on ambulance calls. Dixie had plenty to say about our one-to-one -one models, which we, were complete, we, which we kept iterating and changing. We went on ride-outs and 12-hour shifts to see how the ambulance was working. And yes, we did some kind of engineering-type process uh, mapping, um, you know, failure modes effect analysis from the aerospace industry and so on. Very, very detailed analysis, analysis of what bits of kit have to go where. But underlying all of this was a craft sensibility to do with materials and making. And we came up with a conceptual 3D model of what the new ambulance could look like. And then the exciting bit, we, we decided to get an old ambulance and um, make a demonstrator unit. We bid on eBay. This is an Australian ambulance. That I, I told the team they could only spend 450 pounds. They got it for 425. Um, and we fabricated it. Um, and this is what the new ambulance looks like. Um, it's, uh, it's got daylighting. It's got a digital diagnostic system. It's got 360 degree access to the patient. It's instead of a wooden construction which is which has got lots of nests for bacteria and horrible bugs. It's like the inside of a yacht with, in, with injection molded plastic um, uh, surfaces that you can, you can um, clean down. It's got modular treatment packs, so you only take um, the kit that you need for the emergency that you're going to. And it anticipates a time when all electronic patient records are um, uh, online and therefore you can have the patient records of the person you're going to talk to. That's not me, um, but the, this, this shows the in interior of the ambulance. Um, this is the digital system. And we did clinical trials. We did clinical trials and uh, um, this is the London Ambulance Service is doing a simulated resuscitation in the ambulance carrying out various surgical procedures. And what was pleasing for us in a new ambulance, the new ambulance is green, um, less contamination and bacteria, which is a big problem in ambulances. You can ride in an ambulance and get a nasty bug. And the median time taken to complete tasks um, in terms of checking blood pressure and, and completing a wound dressing was actually in the new ambulance with the new layout, with the better light, with the more logical use of materials and space, um, people did things more quickly. So in a nutshell, um, and we've done other things uh, as well. Um, we've also taken some of the kit in the ambulance and redesigned it. This is the neck brace. Um, that when you have uh, a spinal injury or a neck injury, uh, it doesn't work very well. So we did a lot of tests. 
And this is the craft element of one-to-one, -one, um, trying things out, using different materials, looking at different fixtures and fittings, and you know what is flexible, what needs not to be flexible. You know, to create a new neck brace is incredibly complex, and there isn't a lot of money in the NHS, and we needed to do it very cost-effectively. Eventually, we came up with a patentable design with a clicking system with three different um, sizes. And this is the final design. So from my experience um, working uh, with the Helen Hamlin Center for Design, we're not the Helen Hamlin Center for Craft, but craft innovation, the exploration of materials and making, the sensibility to human behavior and human form, the empathy that underlies the work is incredibly important. And um, I begin to see now a whole world of opportunity that is, um, that is opening up in the health and well-being space.